guys, God bless you. My name is Frances, and here today I am talking to you guys about God having a purpose for your life. I'm only 14, turning 15, and for the glory of God, only 14 more days. And I'm very happy, and my life is changing, literally. My life changed. I met God, Jesus, when I was 12 years old. I knew about him, but when I was 12, I started coming to church with my mom because she forced me, and it was just a routine wake up, go to church, do that, the same thing I was doing. I didn't have no respect for God when I was younger. I'm telling you, my life's changed, changed. These three years of this relationship with him, it's amazing. I'm like, hey, hey God, I love you so much, man. I love you, you're the real MVP. When God came into my life, I was heartbroken. When I really started looking for strength, someone, someone to lean on, someone to comfort, comfort, I didn't have nobody. I tried to come to my mom, but me and my mom kept having so many different levels of understanding. She didn't really understand what I was going through. She, I didn't feel like she was really there for me, but she was. I just didn't want to hear it from her because she was my mom, you know? We're teenagers, and we never want to hear what our parents have to say. But our parents already went through what we're going through, and the Bible says that what sh a child's such a fool that if you don't, if your parents don't discipline you, then how do you expect to grow? How do you expect to learn from your mistakes? My mom told me, espera por el momento de Dios. Wait for the time of God. But I didn't want to wait. Because I was like, I want him. I love him so much. And I was so out of focus. I was so immature. I didn't want attention. I just wanted someone to always be there for me. And when my heart got broken, I gave him all my attention. And it was like, who do I go to now? Now that I don't have nobody. What am I going to do when everything's against me? When I don't have no friends. So I come back to God and towards my path, towards God, it was amazing. I I got to understand what my purpose was. When I was little, I used to always sit here and just preach. I would be in the shower and preaching, preaching, preaching. And I'm like, Dios tiene un propósito para ti, pero God has a purpose for you, but you still don't understand. You're going to go through this and that. You're going to do this. And I was so excited to preach the word of God. It was always the same thing. It was always, God has a purpose for you. And to be honest, I think about it now and I'm like, God has a purpose for me. The same way God has a purpose for you. Whoever is watching this, God has a purpose for you. I'm gonna give you guys a little testimony. But this is more of a proper testimony of how I wanted God to give me a confirmation of what he wanted me to do. Growing up, I went, through anxiety attacks, times I could have been dead. Understanding how I am a very big part of God's plan of spreading the gospel, letting others know what he has to do with your life, and letting others hear the word of God, it's like, you saved me all these times because you was not done with me. My purpose in life has not been completed because you saved me all this time, and you tell me do not be afraid and I don't have anxiety attacks anymore. I walk down the street now. I, I could walk down the street at 12 o'clock after a great service. And I'm like, why should I fear when even in shadows of death, he will be with me? I'm not going to be afraid because the Bible says 365 times, do not be afraid. And that's enough for me to go every single day that God's speaking to me. Do not be afraid for I am with you. And that sucked. I was one. Another time was when I went to camp and it was this year, 2014, and it's called Ahek Camp. And I really love Ahek. Ahek was like the best thing that ever happened in my life. Ahek is basically this association of a whole bunch of youth who are crazy for God. We are like in love with him. We're so crazy for him. We want to feel his anointing every day. We want to be in his presence. We want to be revived with the vision. And that's what the whole team was about. I wanted him to confirm what was going on. I wanted him to confirm what was my purpose because I'm telling you, I went through every single church service and there was that one person who always be like, why do you stand back? Why do you hold the word of God and why are you so afraid? And to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't have a reason to why. I just didn't feel because I was too afraid and too scared of what people were going to think of me. I was so afraid of what they were going to say that I was like, what am I supposed to do now when everyone doesn't want to hear me. I had so many friends. I was so popular. To be honest with you, I have no friends now. And it's not like I don't have no friends. Like, I mean, world friends. 
because they don't like what the words that are coming out of my mouth. My vocabulary was changed. The people that I used to hang out with, I cut them off. I was like, you're not bringing me closer to my destination. You're not bringing me closer to my goal. You're not bringing me closer to my purpose. At this AA camp, like I was saying, it was anointing of God. But the last day I was like, no God, I'm not leaving here the same way. I want my life to rotate. I don't want to be the same. On July 12th, it was 10 o'clock. And that's when the anointing of God fell there. 10 o'clock. And that church service was not over till 3 in the morning. Let me tell you that. It was 10 o'clock. And I look at my and I look at my phone and I'm like, I told you I wasn't here living here the same way I came. The preacher does this calling. He goes, if you know that God has a purpose for your life and you want a confirmation from him tonight, I suggest you run to this altar and receive your blessing. Lord knows how fast I ran to that altar because Lord knows that I was out like faster than anything. When I went to that altar and I received my word from God, there was this lady who was filled with the Holy Spirit and his holy anointing. And when she was talking to me, she was like, no te menosprecies. Do not set yourself less than what you are. You need to understand and value yourself more. You need to respect yourself. Don't settle for less because God has more out there for you. God has something set for you that you're going to know when it's time. And for God's plan, it's going to come. And I knew she was talking about the boy that I was talking to. So when I got back, I was like, I'm sorry we can't continue this because it's not the purpose that God wants in my life. It's not what God wants from me right now. But then, this is the good part. Jesus knows that the whole time I was there, I was like, Jesus, if this is really what you want me to do, let somebody tell me that this is what you want me to do. The lady comes to me, this lady, three people come to me and they go, oh, um, God bless her, da, 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 da. But there's this one lady, she was a short lady, old lady, comes up to me. It's not a lady talking. I need to tell you that. This is something different. This was not a lady talking. This was God talking to me. Because if it was her, it would have been like, God says, no, 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 no. People, my people, my people, my people. People of God, brothers and sisters, I am telling you. This lady goes and says, the words of her mouth felt like, fire for a point in time they felt like I don't know everything was white everything was white and what she was saying was just so powerful that I didn't know how to react she goes Eme aquí soy yo. when she said that it felt like wind rushing through me it felt like something so super so unnatural something sobrenatural something above natural i don't even know how to say sobrenatural in english i think it's like <laughs> i don't know but it was something so powerful that i'm gonna try to translate what she said in spanish but it won't sound the same so it won't feel the same but she goes here i am this is me I've been with you this whole time. I've given you trials and tests that you probably don't, you didn't think they were me. Listen to me. Run. Open your mouth and spread the words that I have blessed you with. I will not leave your side which the Holy Spirit will be in you, giving you the words that you need to let others know about me. Do not settle for less, for what I made you is more than anything in the world. You are so beautiful in my eyes. You are like a ray of sunshine. You are just perfect. You're just for me. And oh, I can't even tell you what will happen. There, I fell in the donating God. I started worshiping him i couldn't stop speaking in tongues i didn't even i knew what i was saying i was speaking such a beautiful language i was talking to him and i was saying and i was like i was speaking in tongues and i was saying i knew what i was saying but the, the way that i was saying it wasn't the same as english or spanish it was in a language that i understood what he said to me and he understood what i said that night when I prayed, 
I ask God to answer every prayer of me. Everything that I've been praying for, for him to please answer it. When I'm telling you, when I had that encounter with God that night, it was something so powerful. Something I can't even describe because it just, it was so powerful. He answered everything. And he let me know the purpose of my life. And God wants me to spread the word. But he wants everybody to spread the word. But me especially, God wants me to go out to the nations. God wants me to run, fly, be anywhere, anywhere I want to be. Just go and spread my word. But God also lets me sometimes when I'm in a service, I run. And I run because I don't know what to say to the person that I'm staring at. I could be in a service and I could go and look at you with a serious face like and a thousand thoughts rushing through my mind and my tongue is flowing in my mind but I don't want to open my mouth because I don't want to let the words in I don't want a mistake and I don't want to be afraid but then the lady said why did you doubt me when I put those words in your mouth it was me who I needed you to travel to tell this person what I needed you to say and I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. I didn't have an excuse. At the same time, he was blessing me. At the same time, he was answering my prayers. But at the same time, he was disciplining me. He was telling me, there's no more holding back. Because I am soon to come. God is coming. And, you know, if you really want to know what your purpose is, you can't just sit there like a couch potato and just be like, I'll just wait for God to tell me what is my purpose. No, you have to get out there. And... Even if you don't know your purpose, everyone has a purpose in life. It's to spread his word. And it doesn't matter if you if you don't feel like you have a purpose. But everybody has a purpose. But if you really want to know what God's purpose for your life is, you need to have a connection with him. You need to talk to him every day. You need to fast. You need to pray. You need to read the word more because everything you want to know is in here. He literally tells you in everything. And every step of the way, he won't leave you. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God doesn't sleep. God is awake every minute of the day. Every second, he is with you. He is watching over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and for more. Amen. I must say, when God has a purpose for your life, it's not like he won't let nothing. Because there are times when you get out of the way of your purpose. But when God has a purpose and you search for that purpose, actually want to know what it is, you will go out there and you will find it. Who is against you when God is by your side? Everybody. People will be talking bad. Enemies will come. Even the devil will bring you blessings. Because God uses the devil to bring you blessings sometimes. He's helping you get to your purpose. You will pass through obstacles in life. But God says, it's okay. It's just a process. I'm not going to let you go through something that I know you can't handle. God spiritually has is preparing you for what is what for what is to come. There will be a time where us Christians, we will be persecuted. But we have to use the word of God. And we have to fight for what we know is right. And that's our purpose. That's everyone's purpose. To spread the gospel. And to protect it. Because God, that's what God wants us to do. Are you going to stand firm in the word of God and help others hear it because when the day of judgment comes you don't want to be sent to hell because you forgot you were too shy you couldn't do it because of an excuse he is saying I gave my only son to the world because I loved you I loved you because you believe I don't want you to be lost and I don't want you to stay behind when I come I want you to come and sit at the table with me and enjoy and ask all the questions but actually the Bible also says that when you get up to heaven there will be no questions to ask I really hope this touched somebody's heart and God bless you and please 
go out there and make a difference. Share this video with anybody, your friends, your family. Share it. Let the word of God read somebody else's heart. Amen.